we're going to start to work on today is we're going to work on that ladybug painting. It's one of our beginner paintings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil first and I'm going to give myself a sketch before I get started because that's going to make it a little bit easier. It kind of gives us a little road map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up just a couple inches on my, my canvas and I'm going to make as straight of a line as I can across. You've got a little bit less space on this side than you do on this side because we're going to have a flower that comes up over this way, okay? And right at the end of this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a little circle for his head. And then I'm going to come up kind of high and I'm going to just make that rainbow shape here. And what that's going to do is now I've got my shape of my ladybug. So that is easy enough, right? Now as for my flower goes, I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> And I'm just going to draw a line like this. This line will get thicker as I paint, but again, this is just a road map. It's going to start about here. And then I've got the inside of my flower. So I'm going to make a little circle up here. And then you can make your petals however you want. But I'm going to make it a pretty typical shape here. If you look, it almost looks like it's going to be two hearts on each side here. So you can make your flower shape however you want your petals. And then what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I want my spots to be. And I can make my spots smaller, I can make some larger, and I don't want to forget to make some half ones when it comes to going on the line. That way it'll look like they're wrapping around to the other side. But you can make them as big or small as you want. You can make as many or as few as you want. You don't have to make them in the exact same places that I have. Remember, every painting is different, and as long as you're happy with how it comes out, that's the most important part. So, what I'm going to do now, I've got my little road map here sketched. I'm not going to worry about the grass or anything else like that right now. I'm just going to worry about getting my ladybug painted in the way that I want. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my medium brush and I'm going to dip it right into my black paint and I'm going to make sure that I load my brush with both sides so that I get a good amount in there and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start just by painting in all of the circles. Now as I paint I'm going to get more and more familiar with my brush. And if I want, you can kind of see here, it's, it's flat. And so when I do, when I turn my brush on an angle, it'll give me a little bit of a straighter line here. So that way, and pick up your canvas and turn it the way that you need, whatever makes it comfortable, so that you can get as good of a line as you want. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go into all those other areas. Now as I get to the smaller areas, remember on those tips and tricks video, I showed you that we're going to use this for our details in our smaller areas, right? So these kind of count as some of our smaller areas and our details because what's going to end up happening here is as these spots get smaller, an easy thing to do, and you can do this with the head too, is to give it a little outline this way. And then you can go ahead and fill it in. Now when you fill it in, you want to think about which brush to use. This circle specifically is okay for me to be using the smaller brush. I don't have to scrub with it because remember that will break the brush. But if I go and I do an outline on this circle, it's a great idea because it's going to get me a nice clean line here, so it's a great idea to give it an outline, but am I really going to want to use this tiny little brush to fill in that whole space? It's up to you, but I don't think so. I think what's going to end up happening if I do that is that I'm going to end up scrubbing with it and I'm going to end up ruining my brush. So instead, I'm going to take that outline and then I'm going to fill in with my larger brush. 
If I'm going faster than you, the great thing about this is that you get to hit pause at any time. So I want you to go ahead and take your time. Just hit pause and then restart as you're ready. Because if you rush through this, you're going to end up maybe sad with how your painting came out. Because anytime we rush, we're not really doing our best work. And it's important that we do our best work. So definitely feel free to stop and pause and stretch, grab something to drink, run to the bathroom, whatever you need to do. So I'm going to outline. And again, it's just to make when I go to paint them a little bit easier with that medium brush. All right, now I can decide which ones I think that I can fill in with my small brush without a problem here. And I think I can fill a couple of these in. And then I'm going to switch over to that medium brush again. And if I even put it in one spot and then just spin my brush, that will help me fill those areas in too. That's a little way that you can do it if you want. Now remember, if you hit a spot that you didn't mean to hit, or if it drips or anything like that. I want you to kind of wipe it away as small as possible. You don't want to wipe it all over the canvas, but just wipe it away a little bit here. And then you're going to let it dry completely. And then you'll paint over it again. The worst thing you can do when you're painting is be impatient and try and cover something before it's dry. Because if you do that, it's going to end up smearing. Now what I'm doing is I'm cleaning out my brush. I'm tapping it all over the bottom of my cup because that way it's going to get the majority of my paint out. You can already tell the majority of my paint is out there. And then I wipe it on the side of the cup. The water is going to drip back into the cup. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to dry it off. Alright, so now I've got a nice clean brush to work with from now on. The next part that I'm going to do, because I want these... Um, these black dots to dry really, really well. So the next part that I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on my background. So I'm cleaning off this brush first. Oops, I got a little red on there. But I'm cleaning off this brush first because I don't want my paint to sit in my brush that will ruin the brush. So always have your brushes clean and ready to go. So when I go to work on this background, it's a blue background, and what I like to do when it's a sky is I, this is a pretty dark blue, so I'm gonna lighten it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of blue here, and then I'm gonna take a little bit more white, and I'm gonna start painting, and you can do it however you want. But see how they kind of mix together and it lightens it up? And you can decide how light you want this to be. It's completely up to you. So if I want it even lighter, I'm going to only add white then, because I've already got blue on my brush. And I'm just going to keep adding that white. And I'm going to very carefully go around my petals, and then I'm going to fill it back in here. Now depending on the type of style you want to do, I like to keep my brush strokes kind of consistent as best as I can across my board. So right now you can see I've got some going this way, I've got some going this way. So what I like to do is after, while it's still wet though, go back over it and then see how they're all going the same way again. So that makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to keep mixing that white and that blue.
about here. And then I'm going to stop because I'm going to end up putting some grass in there. So again, I'm going to try and look at my brush strokes and see how close to the same direction they're going in. And then anytime I get up close to these lines, I'm remembering to turn that brush so that it's going the thin way so I can get a nice consistent line. Now if you look real carefully, my black was wet and I, I streaked a little bit of that black into the blue. So what I can do right now since it's not a lot is just kind of wipe it away with my thumb. But what's important is that that means that I've got it on my brush right now. So I'm just going to wipe it off. I don't even have to get water, but I'm just going to wipe it off. And I'll just add some more color back there. Good as new. It's easy to have that happen, so never ever stress if it happens. Just figure out the best way to fix it at the time. If it would have gotten a lot of black on there, I would have wanted to wipe it away as best as I can, then clean off my brush completely, then let it dry completely, not the whole painting, but just that spot, let it dry completely, and then once it's dry, come back over it with my blue and my white. down around the same spot here. So that they're kind of around the same level on both sides. If it's not perfect, don't worry, because we're going to put grass over it, but I like to try and keep things the same as best as I can. I'm going to spin that brush, and I still didn't get up as close as I want, and I think what's going to be easier for me, and probably for you too, is if I get that little brush out again. And I give it a little outline here. So I've got my little brush nice and cleaned off and all ready to go for me. little bit of blue to fade that in together. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and again I'm going to pick this up because that's going to be easier for me. You do it however it's easier for you. Just be careful if you use your hand to kind of balance yourself you want to make sure that you're not sticking your hand in wet paint. So I'm just going around I'm giving this little guy an outline. I'm not going to go all the way around his head because his little wings here are going to be touching it. So we'll leave that alone. I'm going to clean out that brush again dry it off so that it's ready to go for next time. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint my flower petals. I'm going to paint them white. But just because I paint them white doesn't mean that you have to paint them white. But I'm going to dip into my white paint with my medium brush. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of come around here and see I'm, I'm kind of putting it in one spot and spinning it again as I get to those rounded edges. It's going to help me get a better edge. And again, if you, I'm kind of anchoring myself on my painting so that I can have a steadier hand. But if you do that, you just want to make sure that you're not sticking your hand in the wet paint. The good thing about this paint, we're just using craft acrylics and so it dries relatively quickly. So you shouldn't have too many problems with it, but you got to remember not to use too much paint 
at once because that's how you're going to glob and it's going to drip and then things tend to mix together and get kind of messy and crazy. So you're going to use a little bit of paint and then you can always add on. So I'm just filling each in each petal as I go here. You want to make sure not to leave any white spots on the canvas that are unfinished. So I'm going to make sure that I go in tight to any spaces that I need to. You're going to want to kind of check yours out and make sure you do the same. And remember, everybody's is going to look different because we each blend our colors differently and maybe you chose to do a different color flower and maybe you chose to do different kinds of petals. But you want to make sure that even if you do different shapes and sizes and all that good stuff that your whole canvas by the end is finished, that you've painted the whole thing. So there I've got my white petals going. Now a good way to know whether or not your paint is dry, I'm hoping you guys are going to be able to see this, but depending on, I don't know if my light's very good here, but depending on which way you hold it in the light, you'll be able to see kind of a little glisten or a little shimmer on the wet paint and the rest of it will will look dry. So that's a good way to know whether or not it's dry. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to paint the shell and we're just going to use our big brush for that. And I'm going to start by dipping it into the red. And again, I'm going to hold my brush so that you can kind of see that it's flat right here and I want just this part to be touching the line. If I want a wide line, I'm going to paint like this, but if I want a thin line, I'm going to paint like this. So I'm going to hold it so you see just that. And then I'm going to just, as carefully as I can, go around the black spots. And we'll be able to go in with that small brush again, but we're going to cover a good chunk of our space first and then just go into the tiny spots as we need. So you may go into them differently than me. You can go ahead and do that outline again if that's easier for you. Whatever you're comfortable doing, that's what you should do. If you force yourself to do something and your hand is uncomfortable or it's awkward or whatever, it's, it's not gonna work out nearly as well. When I'm holding this brush, I'm hoping you can see, I'm holding it right on that gripper, holding it like a pencil. And that's going to help me have better control when I spin it and shouldn't slide then. So I'm going to go right up to that space, just like that. important that we do things in a certain order too because again if we just want solid colors on here that means not using more than one color just the color that we have like this red like I'm using it's important that everything's dry when you go up next to it or at least very close to dry so that's why I didn't do 
the stem right after I did the blue sky because that would have made it tricky. So I did the dots first because now they're dry and I can do my shell and I don't have to worry about my black paint smearing and dripping. So I'm just going to keep on painting around these small spaces. And remember if you need to get up closer to anywhere, you can go ahead and go in with that tiny brush after you get all these big areas covered. But remember if you see a white spot, like right here, I can see little, little white spots through here. So I want to make sure that I go back over that so that your whole canvas is covered. Now if you do have to step away and your brush wasn't cleaned off, make sure you rinse it out really, really good to get all that dried out paint off of it. And that'll help when you go to start painting again. But you don't want to step away too long. It's a bad habit to get into. Your paint's going to dry out and your brushes are going to get stiff if you didn't clean them out. So you want to be really, really careful about when you step away. And if you're going to step away for an extended period of time, it's important that you know not to use those paints because they're going to be too dried out. As you work, though, if those paints, just with the air getting to them, if they start to thicken up, you can add just a drop of water and really, really mix it into your paint not on your canvas, but mix it into your paint onto your plate and that'll help you to get it to glide again. So I'm going to go back in there now with my smaller brush. Be tedious, but it's going to be important little details like this that make your painting that much better. People will be able to tell that you really took your time to get all those areas. This brush starts to separate. Remember, you're gonna you're gonna roll it in your paint, and that'll get those bristles to stick back together to make it easier. One more spot. So that's pretty. 
pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean out that brush again. And take some yellow, maybe lighten it a little bit with the white. Uh oh, I have a drip coming right here. If I go and I put this down, it's going to end up at some point while I'm painting dripping onto my canvas. So I want to make sure I dry that off really good first. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go in a circle. And I'm getting the inside of that flower done. Like that. Next I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start working on the grass and start working on my stem here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some colors. Now remember when I say mix, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix them actually on my plate. I'm not going to blend them on my canvas. I'm going to mix them on my plate. I want to make sure my brush is really cleaned out. So it's pretty clean here. So to mix my green, I'm going to use yellow and I'm going to use some blue. And I'm going to start with a small amount because it's easier to add than it is to take away. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I like this green. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow and about the same amount of blue. And you can get whatever shade you want. The darker color will always be more overpowering, so you want to use less of the darker color until you get a feel for how much is in there. So you can see I've got a little bit of yellow still on my brush here. That's actually good. I want to take kind of both of those. So I have a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green on my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I've turned my brush so again I've got that flat side, so I'm not going like this back and forth. I'm going like this. I'm holding my brush straight up and down and I'm going like this. And that's how I'm going to fill in my grass. Now when it comes down to this white part, I'm going to want to use my wide part and fill it in a little bit more. But we want some blades of grass just so that we can see them. fill this in. Now as you can see, I already ran out of my green here, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make a little bit more. And I want to make it as close to the same color. I can tell that I need a little bit more blue in here to get a little bit closer to the green that I already had. and I'm just going to keep filling this in. And just every time you need to make more green, you go ahead and make more green. Just try and make it about the same each time. So you just want to try and remember what you use more of and what you use less of. So that's all filled in. So now I'm going to do more of these blades by dipping into that yellow and green. And again, I want it to be nice and flat. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do some more on each side. Do some shorter ones right up by his head. Like that. Oops. 
And then I'm even going to add just a little bit of white to my brush, not a ton. That'll just make it look like there's some more. It's a little bit thicker in there. You can even add some. And you can do the same thing if you want. With a little bit of the yellow. Just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead with that same green and make a little more here. And I want this to really glide, so I am going to dip it into my water. My water is pink and that's not a big deal. But see how I'm mixing it. I added that water, but I'm mixing it right on my plate. I didn't add a lot, I just added a drip. But I'm hoping that that's going to make it a little bit smoother for me. If you see it, start to drip. I don't see any drips coming. So if I don't see any drips coming, it should be pretty safe. But you want to make sure it's nice and mixed in. So if you see any little hints of water, that's your clue to, to check it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get it flat again. I'm going to start at the top. And I'm going to swoop it all the way down. Now what's important for this part to note is that the harder you press with these brushes, the wider of a line you're going to get. So when I start here, I want to press down just barely. I'm still working with my wide brush. So if I were to really press down with this brush, it's going to end up giving me a really, really wide line. And personally, that's not what I want right now. So instead, I'm going to press really gently. And that's not going to give me as wide of a line. But I'm going to make sure all those white spots are hidden from my canvas there. And then I'm going to go in with my white again. Lighten up my green just a little bit. Just dabbing it on my plate here. I want it nice and flat, so I'm going to kind of wipe it on the side. And I'm just going to give it a little highlight here. And if you want to give it some leaves, you can give it some leaves. You can add a little bit more white to the grass. Just going through. Again, with that straight part of my brush, not the wide part. Just like that. Go ahead and rinse off this brush. Now we're just going to do some of the details of our face. We want to make sure this brush is really nice and cleaned off. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thinner brush here. I'm going to make sure all of my bristles are together. So I want to make sure that I take some water and I go ahead and I smooth those bristles. I'm going to dry off my brush so that there's no drips. I'm going to dip right into my white. And again, I'm going to keep in mind that part of my painting is wet. But I'm going to go to his face, her face, his face, whatever you've decided. And I'm going to make two very small circles. Like this. So I've got two very small circles. And then very, 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 very carefully, again, with these brushes, the harder you press, the wider your line's going to be. Oops, and I just stuck my finger in uh, some wet paint here. So I'm going to go ahead and add back on there. My left hand and painter. There we go. Happens to the best of us, right? Rinse off that brush, dry it off. So, okay, 
You know what, look, I'm going to hang on to this easel part. That's going to help me out here. So I'm going to dip into that white. One, just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this little smile. I'm going to press very softly. I'm going to start in one spot and stop in another and simply lift off my canvas. So I've got a little smile there. And then while I've still got the white on there, I can dip just a little bit into my red and I can make a little tiny pink. And you can lighten it as much as you want. And I can make little circle cheeks. Like that. Rinse off that brush. And then I'm going to dip with the same brush into the black. I'm going to roll my brush into the paint. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to roll that brush so see how I'm spinning it into the paint? So it's nice and loaded here. And now I'm looking and I'm a little nervous that my paint's thick, so I'm going to add some water. So I've got a drip of water here. And I'm just adding it to my black and I'm just going to really mix it in there. I think my paint's been sitting for a while. I did have to get up for a minute. Just like that. It's nice and mixed in. Again, I want to make sure there's no drips. So I'm going to dry off my brush. Dip in. Roll it in. And now what I'm going to do is these little curly Q antennas. So I want you to watch. I'm simply going to find my starting point. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to curl it around. Just like that. And then I'm going to roll it in again. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to curl it out the other way. But it's important for these little details like that to have your paint thin enough. So like I had to step away, so it was important for me to add that little drop of water. See a little white spot here, so I'm going to touch that up while I'm here. And then I'm going to rinse off that brush really good. Got to be careful with this brush that you don't smash it around too much. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dip into my white. Not my white. Sorry about that. I'm going to dip into my black. I'm going to do a little dot here and a little dot there. That way we've got our ladybug. Now this is the time that you can go back through and you can take any of your brushes and you can touch up your certain spaces and do whatever you want to make sure that it's exactly how you want it to be. If you want to add some more highlights into the grass, you can. Now one thing that I will show you is looking at mine, I can see some lines in my red and sometimes those colors just do that. So what I'm going to do to kind of help my red out is just give it another little layer here. And as I do that, it's going to make it look more solid. Now it's up to you whether or not you want to do that. Sometimes I I like to have the little textures going, but it's totally up to you what you want to have. So like that. So now's the time to go ahead and do things like that. So I hope you had fun painting this ladybug and I hope that you got it exactly how you wanted it to be. Here we go.